All right, welcome back to chapter six, and this will be video number 14, and we're gonna do a little bit of a bonus um, project here, applying our knowledge now that we've learned in chapter six of modularizing um, our code and uh, some of the stuff we've done in, even in previous chapters. This one's called Rock, Paper, Scissors. It's a game that kids play all the time, and basically when you run this program, it has a picture of a rock, paper, and scissors, and then embedded somewhere, it says what, what the computer actually selected. So the, the computer selected, a rock, and I know paper beats rock, so if I click on this one here, that the player, that's me, I win, and I, I'm going to count, keep track of that. Now the computer picked another one, it picked paper, I'm going to pick scissors, because scissors can cut paper, so that wins. All right, then the computer picks, um, this is done randomly too, just weird how it worked out. Uh, it picks scissors, now I know rocks can break a pair of scissors, so I'm going to pick that, and I can continuously win. Oh, and it picked scissors again, I'm going to pick rock again. Oh, then pick paper, or I'm going to go scissors. So basically, the computer would never win. I would just endlessly win until I got tired of winning. If I, if I clicked, um, let's say, paper, and the computer picked, that means that the computer wins. If I click scissors and the computer picked scissors, well, no one wins. It's a tie. You have to do it again. So that's the kind of the fundamental concept behind rock, paper, scissors. And in this kind of game program, it just keeps track of how many times I win, how many times the computer wins, and how many times you, well, I should have kept track of how many times we tied as well. But anyway, that's how that program works. Now, in writing the code, um, what I've done here is I'm going to need to do a few things in here. Now, thinking about the logic, of course, there's, you know, um, the computer's going to pick a random uh, selection, and I don't want to you know, decide for the computer. I want the computer to do it for you so I can have a legitimate game. So I'm going to need a random number generator. So we're going to create a new instance of a random variable or uh, an object in memory here called R-A-N-D. It's a new random number um, object in the memory. Also, I'm going to declare a few variables. One here to keep track of my computer's choice, my choice, and how many times uh, the win happened. Those are what I want to keep track of. Now, below that, down here, I'm, I'm actually using a new, that event we talked about in, in chapter four called the load event. So this is when the form first loads. By default, I would like to get the computer's choice. And I could write the code to do that, but I, I decided to modularize the code. So I wrote it up as get the computer's choice. All right, so what that does is when I, when I execute this, it runs this. Now this particular one is simply a void. So it's not returning anything. All it's doing is going to perform some code and then it's going to stop. So what does it do? Well, it takes the all three buttons and cleans out the old, if the word computer happened to be in there, clears that out. And then what it does is it takes an, uh, an instance of this rand variable or object in the memory and runs a method called find the next random number between uh, 0 and 2. And we scale it up so it becomes 1 to 3. And we use a switch to... Uh, determine what they chose. Now, did I have to use a switch? No, I could have used a an if else uh, an, uh, if statement to do that, but I just chose to do it this way. It seemed to work rather well. So if, if the random number was a one, I want the uh, computer to put the word uh, rock. That's, that's the computer's choice. And I also want to put the word computer inside of button number one, inside of here, and then break out. So that's how that actually happens. And then when it returns back, that all gets done when the program first gets loaded. So that's a form load. Now, I'm going to use this get computer choice many times over and over and over. So I want to build it and modularize all that code. So I'll leave that for now. And let's go on. And basically, the computer is going to wait for the user. Is the user going to push uh, one, two, or three? But one, two, three. Now, if they did push one, that means that's their choice. That means that they chose a rock. So I'm going to just say my choice is a rock. And then I want to check, did they win? So I wrote a method called show the winner. All right. So before I get into that, I think I'll break here, and then I'll come back to this part in the video.